Well, I want to try to explain the major differences between lead acid batteries and lithium batteries and why we've chosen to go with lithium. One of the one of the big issues we found with the lead acid batteries was that we um, as soon as we got the motor home we wanted to use more electrical devices 230 volt um, things so we needed to put an inverter in um, to run from those batteries now a lot of um, a lot of people that I spoke to um, some said yeah you just um, connect to the batteries it'll be fine it doesn't matter what sort of batteries you got um, you can you know you can run anything off an inverter other people said hmm you really do you really want to connect an inverter to lead acid batteries because you know not really the the thing to do and nobody really explained why um, I should or should not use an inverter with lead acid batteries especially um, the inverter that we bought originally was a 1500 watt uh, smart inverter so it could um, it could draw in as a startup wattage um, 3000 watts so 3 kilowatts of power now although uh, the inverter can do that and you know we did demonstrations of having three 100 amp hour uh, lead acid batteries the uh, UASA um, L36 EFB so enhanced flooded battery technology and you know really good batteries and they work really well and we demonstrated that we could run an 800 watt microwave um, uh, induction cooker and pretty much anything we needed to you know we could charge up the hoover to, you know just we could plug pretty much anything into it apart from our uh, coffee maker which um, had a consistent draw of um, 2100 or 2100 watts and it because it was a our inverter was uh 1500 consist constant draw um you know, it just wouldn't work it would start up and then it would just click off so how does that affect the lead acid batteries well the lead acid batteries are designed it's very old technology you know it's a hundred year old technology at least and you know there's there's lead plates with an acid solution which you know reacts and creates electricity if you draw too much or pull a lot of ampage out of those batteries you can buckle those plates and you can create something called sulfation i don't completely understand it all but i know that um, drawing a lot of power from a lead acid battery over a sustained length of time is not good for them and you know luckily the lead acid batteries that we had installed we had installed for a fairly short while and we didn't really use them um, in terms of that really heavy draw on them for that long you know a, three to five minutes um for a microwave um you know bits and pieces like that it wasn't it wasn't big so we didn't really damage them at all and they're still you know they're still good so um but we changed to the lithium battery with the bigger inverter charger and that and we have an inverter stroke charger all in one box the um victron multi plus uh three three thousand um and what that does for us it allows us to live off grid and feel like we've got electric hookup all the time the amount of power you can draw from our 200 amp uh 200 amp hour battery lithium 
um, well you can draw at least 200 amps uh, and, and at a peak uh, I think you can draw I think it's a, a 400 amps uh, consistent might be 300 but it's it's huge and that doesn't damage the battery it just drains the power it's fine so but it doesn't it's never going to damage it and those are some of the reasons that we went for that and the avail the availability of power the consistency because what we noticed between when when the lead acid batteries were getting low on power you know they dropped below um 12.2 volts we would start to see things like a 12 volt charger clicking on and off you know when we when we plugged in the ipad to charge up um when you plug it in the ipad goes bing just to let you know that it's oh i'm receiving power but it would even though it was still plugged in it would just every five seconds it would just go bing and then switch off bing switch off so you know even though there was power lots of power still left in the batteries available and all the lights would work and it, it wasn't strong enough to run some of the equipment that just ordinary stuff like 12 volt things that that just should have worked with the lithium it pretty much doesn't lose any of that voltage um, until right at the last when it'll just stop working and that's the beauty of lithium it stays pretty flat in terms of power um, strength whereas lead acid don't and that's a very big difference for us so since we've had the lithium battery installed um i've i've calculated because it you know it's a very expensive um well i say it's a lot of money to buy a lithium battery with an associated charger and you know upgrading all the bits and pieces it's not a direct swap out you can't just take your lead acid batteries out put a lithium in and keep your fingers crossed hope it all works it doesn't you have to think about how you're going to charge up the battery because it needs a different charging profile it needs a lot of push all of you know it, it will take as much power as you can give it in fact our lithium battery will take um, 100 amps of charge over a sustained period and then it will drop off and it'll it'll the battery management system will push um the sort of amp charge down and give it a little bit of float until it just tops it off um over the last hour or, or so to to get it up to that 14.4 fully charged voltage so you have to think about um all of those things and and we did we you know um as I say, the, the battery was a lot of money, but looking at how we've used it, and we've really hammered it, and we we you know we've had it down to twenty percent, which is the lowest it can go. We've had the alarm go off, and uh, then sort of recharged it, and and we've had that get up and down, up and down, a lot, um, and the amount of battery charge cycles that it um, is rated for is about uh, 5,000 at 50% charge and 2,500 at 20% um, depletion so sorry 80% depletion so I'm working on that so it's 2,500 and by my reckoning on what we've done so far and what's available for us to do that battery is going to last us about 25 years so probably as long as we'll be around driving this van um, we'll never have to replace that battery again ever whereas you know our, our lead acid batteries would have been 
I think I think we were about to replace them probably every year to 18 months maybe two years and at 120 pounds per battery and times three so we got 360 plus you know maybe it maybe it's 400 pounds maybe it's a couple hundred quid a year um, you know and and then we've spent um, just short of two thousand pounds on the battery so you know I think it I think it really isn't any more expensive than lead acid but it's more reliable <coughs> excuse me you can use it in a much more effective way and it really doesn't mind you know we've got it inside the um, the lounge area underneath the seat and it's completely safe um, and really very very usable so I would recommend if you're you know if you're thinking about doing off-grid and you have some you know some high electricity demands you know like you want to do cooking a hair dryer um, you know straightening tongs all that sort of stuff uh, electric kettles you know all, all the bits and pieces that you would normally have in your house lithium definitely is the way to go but you need to you need to think about you know properly charging the battery and uh, you know we generally use the sterling DC to DC charger as we're driving and you can get those for caravans so that they just plug in and run off your car um, you know it works off of the alternator effectively and um, you know get yourself a decent um, mains charger that has a lithium uh, charging profile that gives a big push of power to start with gets it up to a certain level probably 13.5 13 13.8 13 and then just tops it off drops it back a bit but there we are so those are my thoughts on the differences between lithium and lead acid um, you know there's lots of discussion as to uh, what lead acid batteries you should buy if you're going that route lots of discussion about which make of lithium battery you should go for but that well those are two entirely different stories we went for Victron lithium batteries with Victron charge controllers for the solar panels Victron battery management systems Victron multi plus uh, inverter charger and the only time we went away from Victron kit was the Sterling battery to battery charger purely because Victron didn't really have one at a price I was happy with so there you go that's it for me on lith lithium batteries today Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you find it useful. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. Click that button below. Click the subscribe button as well. And do click the bell icon so that we can send you a reminder for whenever we upload a brand new video. I'll see you again soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye bye for now.